Hi, Paul Slack is Good News Broadcast, speaking to Dr. Atri. Hi, doctor. How are you? Fine, thanks. Yourself, Paul? Okay, good, good. good. You're with Massachusetts General Hospital Department of Neurology and uh, ICAD, uh, which is the International Conference of an Alzheimer's Disease, right, the largest group of international leaders, and you were an attendee at that event that was down in Honolulu. Yep. You lucky guy. <laughs> and uh, we're going to learn about Alzheimer's disease. Expert uh, offers insight on some of the findings and what this means for patients and caregivers. Okay, good news. What's going on? Well, um, I think there there is there is, there are trends and good news coming out uh, as we discussed in the in the conference. Um, understanding much more how better to diagnose it, how early to diagnose it, how to understand uh, who's at risk more developing it. And really, over time, understanding more the benefits uh, and expectations of the current treatments and the care that we have now in reducing the worsening of the symptoms uh, over time. Um, you know, years ago, we, we, we thought that, you know, this is, uh, uh, you know, something that, uh, you know, may occur in some older people. Uh, now we understand that it's really a disease. And uh, that, you know, as such, it, it, can, it should be, you know, treated as that. So, you know, just being old and getting to be your 70s or 80s doesn't mean that you can't cognitively function well and do well. Uh, and, you know, that, uh, that there are things that can be done. What are some things that can be done? Well, I think that one of the things, certainly, I mean, the very first th thing that you can do for any disease uh, is to actually diagnose it. So if people are exhibiting symptoms of Alzheimer's disease, including forgetfulness, repeating stories, having difficulty doing things that they did before in their daily life, um, you know, being confused, uh, having poor judgment, uh, changes in mood, personality, withdrawal from social activity, initiative, all those things could be a harbinger and, and people can be, you know, should be uh, evaluated. But once evaluated, there are things like hormone deficiencies, vitamin deficiencies, um, strokes, that could be contributing to these symptoms. And also medicines that people are taking sometimes not knowing that they can have a side effect and, and, and vulner be vulnerable to, to them uh, because they may have this issue. So all those can be taken care of and, 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 and treated. Now, that doesn't, that doesn't cure the Alzheimer's disease. That still requires education, shoring up support systems, caring for the caregivers, and then, and then treatment. Treatment with the medications that are approved right now two different kinds of medications that work on different chemical senses in the brain, cholinesterase inhibitor, memantine. And, you know, at this point, our expectation isn't that people are going to revert back to the way five years ago. Really, the expectation is more modest in slowing down the progression of symptoms. The other good news is that what we do in midlife can also help us. What's good for the heart is good for the brain, okay? And, you know, you either use it or lose it. So you can use it more and keep more of it. And I think we're understanding that the benefits of a healthy diet, good sleep, reducing stress, um, reducing ca cardiovascular risk factors like hypertension, so high blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes, not smoking, uh, getting rid of that fat around the belly, you know, that, that a lot of us accumulate over time. Um, all those things are not going to, you know, prevent the Alzheimer's disease itself, but they're actually going to help us be able to combat it for longer and for us to be able to withstand the symptoms for longer so we can, you know, hopefully delay the last stages of the disease, which are very devastating, both physically, emotionally, mentally, and also financially. Are these some of the results of your National Institute of Health uh, sponsored study? Well, um, yeah, we did, a, we did a study um, at Massachusetts General Hospital, um, and it involved patients with Alzheimer's disease, and we looked at the, how the combination of these medications over the long term affected cognitive abilities like memory, language, et cetera, and their ability to function in, in, in daily life. And both us and University of Pittsburgh has an Alzheimer's center that also looked at this, uh, looking at nursing home placement in Alzheimer's patients, and the Baylor College of Medicine, Dr. Roundtree and Duty, also looked at how taking the medicines and staying on them affect things. And all of us have the same sort of results, that we're not um, uh, curing it, and over time, people progress, but when you go on and stay on the medications, what you can expect is the slowing of the progression of the symptoms. So in that sense, that's good news. And hopefully in the future, we'll have even better news uh, uh, you know, about identifying you know, treatments that we can give much earlier to actually prevent the dementia itself. 
Fantastic. A lot of good news here, Doctor. Thank you very much for sharing it. Thank you very much, Paul. Thanks, you take thanks care. Thanks for having me. Be well. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.